Ventra and CNBC TV 18 Digital Lending Summit, Mumbai, India. Well, also to share more insights on Gen AI and how it is reshaping the lending landscape, I would now like to invite Mr. Anupam Mishra, Director AWS, to please come up on the stage. Anupam. Hello, everyone. Namaste. What an exciting set of uh, new product offering which we learned uh, about recently from Ranga and Ankur. Looking forward to see how everyone makes great use of those. Uh, my name is Anupam. I lead the technology team for AWS India. And today I'm going to take you on a quick journey to show what we are seeing across AI and generative AI, especially across how companies are solving different types of problems using the new set of technologies which we are hearing about. So as we all uh, saw in the morning, this is a, we're calling, are we still in the hype phase? Are we still deciding whether this is a technology which is here to stay? Is it a fad? Uh, what I can say for sure is we are just scratching the surface right now. I think uh, people, most people get to know about generative AI through chatbots, which are becoming more and more popular. But chatbot is just a small part of it. There are so many possibilities, and, and so much is yet to come, especially in terms of this technology getting democratized, it becoming, access, becoming accessible to everybody. So I'm looking forward to what possibilities it will have a few years from now. But I'll tell you what experiments are being done using this tech right now on AWS. So if you look at uh, how uh, Amazon has been innovating, we have been using machine learning across various uh, uh, businesses, be it uh, retail website where we recommend products which uses machine learning. On the fulfillment side, we have robots which are doing fulfillment or in our stock, uh, in our warehouses. Uh, they use pathfinding. How do they go from place A to place B? We have... Uh, uh, offering which we are working on called Prime Air, where we're delivering items to customers using drones. Uh, that uses machine learning. Amazon Echo, I'm sure uh, hopefully some of you use it, uh, which can uh, talk to you in natural language. And, and many more possibilities, including things like Just Walk Out, where you don't have to uh, go to a check, checkout clerk. You just pick whatever item you want. You just walk out the, out the store. And, and we automatically build a customer based on what they have picked from the store. It's becoming very popular, just walk out where we are seeing it on airports and uh, many other places. Now, coming to uh, why, why moving quick is necessary. This is an example from Access Bank, uh, which uh, is uh, using uh, AWS for their digital transformation. And this was shared a few months back at our Mumbai summit, where they talked about how they are able to quickly evolve and quickly adopt technology to do what their customers need. For example, in this one, if you look at how many customers are originating for savings account online versus in branch, a very large number is starting to come from uh, online already. If you look at uh, savings account, for example, 23.39% on a given month, whereas on current account, almost 48%. But, but I think one thing is very unique here which is as the age of the person goes down, like 18 to 24 or 25 to 35. So below 35, majority of folks or new customers are coming online. So I think this is an, these are things which are becoming more and more standardized now. All of us are getting aware. But we believe if customers can move quickly and adopt what is really needed, it can make a very big difference to their business. So in the same spirit, let me talk to you about what is happening in Gen AI space? What are the type of things currently getting solved? So generally, it falls into three pillars, which depending on who the problem is getting solved for. So you, you could be solving the problem for a customer of yours, or you could be solving this problem for an employee of yours, or you could be solving this problem where a system already works, but you're making it more efficient. Those are the three pillars under which you can classify almost every generative AI solution today. Now, when you apply a lens of industry, you're going to see a lot of use cases which are already providing a lot of values. Uh, of, we can pick uh, different industries here, but we start with healthcare, for example. I'm seeing very good implementation where these uh, machines are able to understand a discussion between a doctor and a patient and can transcribe it, can recommend what type of actions have happened to the customer, can send a follow-up to the customer, can decide what type of Medicine should be prescribed. So that is on the health scribe or, or scribing um, discussion between a healthcare provider and a customer or, or, a, or a patient. 
But if you look at, uh, let's say, a retail side, a lot of work is happening on how you can have more effective discussion with the customer, where a customer is asking for, uh, let's say, um, uh, you, are, you are trying to, uh, as a seller, you are trying to advertise to a customer, and how can you generate much more relevant images uh, using generative AI to help customers pick the right product. And, and uh, even in fashion industry, for example, we are seeing customers are designing new products using generative AI. It can tell you what possibilities exist. For example, you can say, I'm trying to create a new type of, uh, let's say, a shoe, and it can generate possibilities of what those shoes are, what colors are uh, across the industry. Now, quickly talking about how it, what it means for financial industry. In financial industry, again, there are three types of use cases we are seeing. One is improving the customer experience, thinking about more efficient systems, and creating new products. Let me give you examples in each one. So when it comes to improving customer experience, uh, we just saw some examples from uh, Ankur and, uh, uh, and Ranga, where they are talking about how your customers can get more real-time responses. And we are seeing a lot of companies are working in that area where they're thinking about when an email is received, let's say you're uh, working on a loan processing, and some customer says, uh, mera loan approve ho gaya kya? And in India, I see a lot of people use English. Some of these are written in English, Hindi but written in English, or mix, mixture of words used. Uh, generative AI is able to solve a lot of those problems where it understands the context and also classify those emails into different types so that customer can get much more real-time response of what should be done. So you can free up a lot of your uh, bandwidth of responding, but you can have much more effective calls where you are triaging a lot of this using machine learning to a very high quality. So that is one which we are seeing a lot, understanding the language, responding in the native language of the user, be it Hindi, be it Gujarati, be it something else, and then also understanding what is happening in this case using the content provided. The second one is efficiency of workers. Efficiency is where we are thinking about, you have a lot of documents, and how do you understand the documents? What actions can be taken using those, those documents? And finally, the third one is creating new products. This is where a lot of innovation is happening. Again, new types of companies are coming. Especially, I'm pretty sure some of you are working on those problems as well. I'll just quickly share one startup, uh, which is uh, in US called uh, Thea's uh, uh, Insights, uh, Thea Insight. What they do is they are starting to look at portfolios, investment portfolios, which companies have or individuals have, and trying to correlate the risk which you have because of the exposure which those portfolios will have, which are hard for humans to understand unless you spend a lot of time. For example, let's say you're investing in a solar company. It's very likely you're dependent on um, e-vehicles, you're dependent on charging infrastructure, you're dependent on a lot of other things. Similarly, let's say you're investing in a gaming company. You probably are dependent on GPUs, uh, because gaming companies use a lot of that. You're dependent on streaming platforms, so it can understand context around things and offer new offerings. So this is the area where a lot of companies are thinking in a very different way. That uh, I was working with a customer, they said, we had seven people who used to read the annual report of every company and give us insights. Now a lot of this is, can be automated and make this team much more enabled to act on it. So I, I feel we are just scratching the surface here. We are going to see very new type of experiences where machines can understand many, many more documents and correlate those things much better in an in a unstructured way. Now, coming to how AWS is making it simpler, our approach is to democratize machine learning for everyone. We start, we look at three pillars here. One is, how do we give it, if you look at the bottom most, which is, how do we give infrastructure which is very, very scalable and cost effective? Middle layer is, if people know how to use generative AI, how do we give them right tools? And the third one is, how do we create applications where you don't even need to know about machine learning, but it does give value to you, be it uh, uh, assistance, be it uh, systems which can help. So quickly sharing a few, few innovations in this. Uh, we have started, uh, we created two new hardware. One is called Trainium and Inferentia. Inferentia is used for inference, which is a part of the problem where you understand what is happening given a data from customer, and training is where you build the model. So for each one of them, we have custom chips, which was created a few years back, and now it has led to efficiencies uh, which we didn't imagine earlier. So with the Inferentia, for example, you're getting four times more throughput than the traditional Inf1. We had two versions of it, Inf2 and Inf1, and 10x lower latencies. So 
the lower the cost, the more applications can be moved and brought to the market. Because one of the other things which I have learned is, while you can create very exciting products, the unit economics have to work. If a customer is paying you 10 rupees, you cannot build a product which charges or which costs you 20 rupees to serve the customer. So a lot of innovation happening in bringing the cost down. The second one is bedrock, where we allow customers to use whatever models they want and customize them. The biggest issue, especially when we talk to financial companies, is how do we keep it secure? Companies, and I, I, we saw this discussion throughout the day, security is a pillar for whenever finance com comes into the picture. How do we not give any data which you have, be it your data, proprietary data, or your customer data, to any third-party provider? So what we do is we keep all the data in your own machines. We call them uh, a VPC, virtual private cloud. You are not, we are not sharing it to any model. So you have complete control and you can use that to bring the experience which you want without worrying about data getting shared with any provider. And finally, products like Code Whisperer, where developers' efficiency can be increased. Developer is a big piece of bringing these applications quick to the market. With Code Whisperer, we have seen it can generate code automatically, where you write a comment, you say, please write a code to download this file, transform this file, upload this file. It can generate all of it. It can generate test cases. It can find security flaws. So a lot of developers are using it. We are seeing 30 to 50% efficiency for developers. So this is another place we are building more and more tools to make developers more efficient. We are, they're not copy-pasting from one place to another, rather than that using generative AI to bring real value. And, and this is how it looks overall. A lot of work happening in the bottom layer, which is building new hardware. In the middle layer, we are building tools like uh, Bedrock and Agents. And, and with the, in the shortage of time, I, not, I cannot go into details of everything, but allowing you to really add value. And finally, uh, applications, where we recently launched an application called Q, Amazon Q, where you can interact with all the data which you already have in your systems. For example, you may have a wiki data. You may have some... Uh, lessons which you have learned, maybe your troubleshooting data, and that can be um, that can be used in a natural language. Any of your employee can ask, uh, should we approve a loan if a if a customer has this and that thing, and and if, if that data is existing across multiple documents, all of this can be used together. Finally, how can you start? If some of you are thinking of starting on generative AI, I'll just share a few tips with you. One, select the right problem. It's very important to pick the right problem. I've seen a lot of cases where companies jump on this, but then they realize cost doesn't work, the use case is not important enough. So it's very important to know, assume that success will be there. Let's say this is successful. What ROI will your business get? Do you expect some new, start, new users will start coming? Do you expect more conversion will happen? Do you expect your unit economics will become? So have a very clear, good clarity on what you are chasing. Second is, this is quickly evolving field. What we are talking today may, may become outdated very quickly. And of course, it happens with every tech. But this one is very, very fast moving. So it's very important to empower your teams to learn and be aware of what is state of the art. For example, some companies I've seen are creating generative AI-based videos. Right now, that's not a technology which is uh, available. But in future, it's going to be available uh, as well. And finally, how do you make sure you can take some baby steps towards making it a possibility. So start with a POC where you have a very clear outcome, clear hypothesis, and the team is empowered to learn and bring it to market. And we as AWS are happy to help. Uh, we have something called AWS Generative AI Innovation Center, where we have invested about $100 million to build a team which is dedicated to help customers do really what, what is important for them. With that, thank you so much, and looking forward to see what innovation we see in India using generative AI. Thank you. Lentra and CNBC TV 18, Digital Lending Summit, Mumbai, India.